Hi everybody and welcome to the fourth and concluding part of the sub part of this lecture series on the extended dynamic mode decomposition or EDMD. What we have seen until now is that if we have this Koopman operator definition, right, it acts on a function, um, so it's an infinite dimensional linear operator, then if we define a dictionary psi that spans a subspace of this function space where the observable functions live in, then we can compute a finite dimensional approximation of this operator which takes the form of a matrix. And we have also seen that you can then compute eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix. The eigenvectors would be xi and the eigenvalues would be lambda. And then the action of the Koopman operator can be expressed as a sum of eigenvalues times the eigenfunctions. So it's a simple eigen decomposition as we know it from linear systems and then multiplied by these what we call Koopman modes which give us let's say the relative importance of these eigenfunctions to reconstruct the observable psi here. Okay and what should be always kept in mind is that this is all only an approximation. Right? For very complicated dynamics, chaos let's say, um, it is very clear that this approximation cannot hold. Right? We, we only have a point spectrum here, so it really it eigenvalues of a matrix, whereas you can have a much more complicated spectrum in this setting. But anyway, assuming that this approximation gives us a good well, feeling of the system or a, a good approximation that we can use for analysis, we can use this decomposition. So the eigenfunction is if we assume that this finite space is a good approximation, then we can express this eigenfunction in terms of the dictionary times the eigenvectors. And the eigenvalues give us this. And so what is now left is the question how to compute the Koopman mode so that we have a complete description. And we're going to do this not for the scalar observable function, but for vector valued functions, which is very popular and common. For instance, if you use full state observables. Right? And then to wrap up, we are going to complete this sheet here to see what do we need, so one thing is still missing, and which computations need to be carried out in order to do all of this. And we've done so in the code already, but here's just to, to summarize. Okay, so what we're going to consider is a vector valued observable that I'm simply going to denote by G. Right. So it's in this function space that I am um, approximating, so a, the, the subspace that is spanned by the set of basis functions. And since it's not a scalar function, but it gives me a vector valued output for each X that I plug in, I can express this in terms of the dictionary, but I need multiple coefficient vectors. So this g of x is now by its own a vector of scalar functions. Let's call them n maybe. And so this lowercase n is not a coincidence. We have used this for the state space I mentioned before, but what people often do is to take these uh, functions as you know, picking the state and mapping it to the individual entries of the state. So this would be the full state observable. But it doesn't have to be lowercase and any vector length of vectors is obviously allowed. Um, so what we get is we get a, an expression in terms of my dictionary, so the basis, and then multiplied by coefficients b1 until my basis evaluation multiplied by a different set of basis vectors bn. Or if I want to evaluate this in terms of, of, of matrices, then I can write, and I'm going to use the transpose for, for some reason that will become clear in a second, times the B matrix, but I need to define it the other way around. So what we see is that this B matrix is now has n lowercase n rows and uh, sorry columns 
and uppercase n, so the number of basis functions, um, rows, so that we can have this multiplication and this will give us the observable function or the reconstruction of this function in the subspace fn that is spanned by these basis functions. Okay, and so what have we started out with is the question of how to get the Koopman modes. Right? We know we get the lambda and we get the phi via psi times psi using the eigenvalue decomposition of our k matrix. <clears throat> so what about the v? And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this definition here to, um, but in a vector value form or in a matrix form, so to all of them together, to derive an expression for v. We will see how this turns out in, in the end, let's see. So what we have, this, this relation um, now in vector form, so I'm, so a matrix form, excuse me, so I'm not considering the individual, but I'm putting them into the columns of this capital phi matrix. What I then get is my dictionary. So nothing special here, this is exactly this relation, only for all the columns, times now not the individual eigenvectors, but the eigenvector matrix, and I'm going to use this capital Xi letter for this, okay? So exactly this one, but what we can do now is we can express the dictionary in terms of the eigenfunctions. So assuming that this is a full rank matrix, I can simply invert it and multiply from the right with the inverse. So what I get is, is Psi of x. So I'm going to express my dictionary in terms of these eigenfunctions. Um, how can I do this? I can simply multiply from the right with the inverse of psi. So right. simply enough if it's invertible. Let's assume that it is for now. And then I can define this to be something else. And I'm going to note it by W star. So the star means transposed and complex conjugate. Um, so basically I'm giving this one just a new name, so the inverse gets a new name, and it's this transposed complex conjugate for a reason, because, and this is now, I'm just stating this without making the full derivation, um, what this W means is if I take the individual columns of this and I transpose it so it's a vector becomes a, a row vector, multiply with the K matrix in my, so my Koopman operator approximation, then what I get is lambda K times V K. Sorry, W K. Okay. So what you see is we have some sort of eigenvalue equation, but now it's a left eigenvector. So the W is a left eigenvector instead of a right eigenvector. And the reason for this is that what is known as uh, a dual basis, okay? So the right eigenvectors Xi and the left eigenvectors W form a dual basis, okay? So these two. which means that they are related by this inverse relation here, okay? And so what this means is actually we can solve another eigenvalue problem to get this coefficient matrix. And this can in the end be very helpful. So let's plug it all together. All I'm saying until now is we get the K matrix using EDMD. We compute the eigenvalues and the left eigenvectors, the size, to get this relation. And then we compute the left eigenvectors to have an expression of the dictionary in terms of these eigenfunctions. And this is what I can use now to uh, simplify my expression for the g of x. So what you see here is um, simply what I'm doing here is for the psi, I'm plugging in the phi times w star. 
So here this becomes phi w star b, and this is exactly what you will see here. This is phi of x w star b. And so the transpose is only because this would be a row vector and the g is defined as a column vector. So this is what the transpose does for me. And so I can use the rules, which means I can you know, swatch, swap the order and put the transpose on the individual entries. So this would be w star b transposed times phi of x transposed. And now I can give this thing a new name, and I'm going to name it V. Right? So what we get is V times phi of x, or if I put it in terms of a sum, the VK times phi k of x. And so you see that we are done, right? So what we have done, we can express this g of x in terms of this modal decomposition again, and what we see is that the v is simply calculated by taking the left eigenvectors and this projection matrix v. Okay? So this is what you need, some, some matrix that gives you a relation between your dictionary and the observable that you are interested in. So this has to be computed offline, and then we can use data to do so. So let's complete our little sheet here. What we need is data, a bunch of samples, and then the same samples evaluated forward by the flow, the capital F. We need to define this dictionary, and then if we want to study a certain observable G, let's say the full state observable, we need this projection matrix. which gives us B such that G of X is Psi of X B transposed. Okay, so what you see exactly what we've defined here, and this B matrix needs to be given. A usual case would be to include uh, the, the entries that we are interested in right away into the Psi, which would mean this is sort of a, a matrix that gives me some indication where to, for, where to look, or we can solve this by a simple regression problem to get the best approximation of G in terms of the basis functions. Okay, so this is what we need. Data, a dictionary, the projection matrix, and all of what we're going to do now is in the subspace spanned by these basis functions. And the choice of this subspace obviously is very, very important in terms of, of this approximate sign, let's say. How well can we work with this? Okay, so what do we compute now? We compute, um, we have seen this in one of the previous videos, these A and G matrices, which are, um, we take the data, we lift it into Psi of X. Okay, so what we need is we need this Psi X, and well, let's start with this one from Psi X and Psi Y, right? So we lift our data in terms of the, the dictionary. And then we compute our K matrix simply as the pseudo inverse of G times A. So a simple linear regression problem as we have seen it numerous times now. And then, so, this is the first part that's really important, of course, the K matrix. Then we continue to solve an eigenvalue problem. Uh, we start with the eigenvalues, N of them, which is the dimension, and then left and right eigenvectors. which we denoted by Psi K and WK star. 
Okay, so these are the next quantities. We have the K matrix, then using the K matrix we get the eigenvalues and we get an eigen decomposition in terms of right eigenvectors and left eigenvectors. And then we're basically there, okay? So what we need to do is we can compute eigenfunctions, phi k, evaluate at some point x, is our dictionary psi, evaluate x times the coefficients, which are now the eigenvectors. And so this is really a function you can plug in any x to get the ev function evaluated at, at arbitrary x. So we have our eigenfunctions, so we have the eigenvalues, and the Koopman modes are given by wk star times the projection matrix B. All right, so four videos to derive this, but in fact, it's actually quite simple in the end. All we need to do is collect the data, lift it, solve a regression problem, and then do an eigenvalue decomposition. What can be complicated, of course, is the question of approximation quality um, in terms of finite data, but also in terms of selecting the subspace, and there's a lot of theory going on and, and ongoing research as well. Um, also critical voices uh, saying that, well, you can never use a linear system to learn something about nonlinear systems. And there's also some truth to that in, in some cases. Um, but still, it's a very, very useful tool for many systems, in particular, where you have stochasticity. Um, yeah, well, maybe this is going too far, but really, it's a very, very powerful tool and easy enough to use. From a practical perspective, um, what is also relevant is that these matrices can become really large. And we've already seen the G and A matrices are n by n, so independent of the number of samples. And we are going to soon study kernel EDMD, where these become sort of M by M matrices, so independent of the dictionary size, but instead um, dependent on the data size. So depending on if you have large state spaces and a few snapshots, or if you have small state spaces and a large number of samples, we can yeah, modify this routine to get more efficient um, algorithms based on, on our needs. Okay, but this concludes this part. We are going to discuss next the relation to the classical dynamic multi-composition and then move on to, to kernels and uh, other advanced topics. Thanks a lot and see you soon.